We are here to take a close look at Helene and the 8 a.m. advisory. Helene is still a tropical storm as it passes by just to the east of Cancun, but it is a very strong tropical storm with sustained winds of 70 miles an hour, so it will shortly become a hurricane. And the cone takes it to the north into the Gulf of Mexico, and it will continue to strengthen. Unfortunately, we will have a category two hurricane likely overnight tonight into Thursday morning, and then by Thursday afternoon, it is expected to become a major category three hurricane with sustained winds of 120 miles an hour. And from there, it will take aim at the Gulf Coast of Florida. Now, the center of the storm could be anywhere from Panama City over to Perry. Right now, Tallahassee in the middle of that cone. But again, that's the center of the storm passing to the west of us. But we know that those impacts will be well beyond the center of that storm. So when we take a look at the cone, itself. You can see how it is expected to hang to the west of the first coast, but we are on the bad side of that storm, so we will get a lot of impacts out of this system out of Helene, which will be likely a major hurricane when it makes landfall. Now, where exactly will it make landfall? We'll know more as the storm continues to organize and moves into the Gulf, but right now models again show you anywhere, mainly from the Apalachicola and Tallahassee area, some of them leaning to the east, closer over towards say Valdosta and Live Oak. And again, we will get the rain and the wind impacts from this storm. Quick look at wave heights. You can see down here in the Caribbean 13 feet when it comes to those waves. It's not as rough over portions of the Gulf Coast and the Atlantic Coast of Florida yet, but we will watch these seas increase out over the Gulf. What about rainfall totals? Well, you can see the swath of rain 10 inches and even more than that in localized amounts for places up where that center of the storm is going to be. So again, near Apalachicola and then even continuing up towards the Atlanta area. But for us, for the first coast, I think most places will receive over at least an inch and a half, anywhere from two inches to higher amounts, four inches, localized amounts up to six or even eight inches of rain. And you get more rain the further west you go. So places like Lake City and up towards Waycross, we'll be watching for more rain, more localized flooding threat there. Because although we have been dry for the past several days, Days. Unfortunately, our grounds are still saturated when we had the two weeks of consistent rain. So our grounds still holding a lot of water and won't be able to drain as quickly as normal. What about the wind field? Well, if you look at the yellow here, this is tropical storm force winds, and then it gets to hurricane force winds there in the middle in the center. So the wind field for Helene shows us that by Thursday morning, places like Key West to Fort Myers to the Tampa Bay area tomorrow morning could be feeling tropical storm force winds. And then as we head into Thursday afternoon and Thursday night, those winds start to pick up over us over the Jacksonville area through Waycross and the stronger winds, of course, at landfall again somewhere on the Gulf Coast of Florida. But we will continue to experience tropical storm force winds at least through Thursday afternoon afternoon and Thursday night into Friday morning. So a closer look at our local wind speeds. Winds will start to pick up, especially by Thursday afternoon. We're talking gusts up to around 30 miles an hour. They only increase from there. Thursday evening gusts around 40 miles an hour, and then they could be 50 to 60 mile an hour wind gusts, not sustained, but those gusts overnight Thursday night into early Friday morning. Then as we head into our Friday afternoon, we start to see the winds drop back a bit as Helene surges to the north. We'll still be gusty out there though through our Friday afternoon, Friday evening, finally starting to see those winds dip back a bit. Hey, new as of the 8 a.m. advisory, Everyone is under a tropical storm warning on the first coast. So originally earlier this morning, Southeast Georgia, you were only in a tropical storm watch and that has now been upgraded to a tropical storm warning. So let's talk about these impacts locally. The biggest takeaways is that it's going to be worse towards I-75. So that's what we're watching places like Lake City and then up towards Waycross as well, our western areas. Jacksonville, your wind gusts anywhere from 40 to 60 miles an hour, but they will be strong longer over in the Lake City area. You will have hurricane force gusts 75 plus miles an hour. 
As for your rainfall, anywhere from two to five inches, generically speaking, but we could have locally higher amounts, especially again out towards the I-75 corridor, and that will lead to some flooding, some street flooding, the collection of water in these low lying areas. Uh, if you have a, a yard that's been flooded before from the previous amount of rainfall that we had, you could start to see it collect there again. A lot of these impacts are going to happen in the overnight hours. So keep that in mind while you're sleeping. Make sure that you keep your sound on and you keep your devices charged so you can get alerts if you need them. So let's break it down county by county impacts. Glenn, Camden and Nassau County. Thursday will be your worst 12 hours between 6 p.m. and 6 a.m. You could have gusts to 60 miles an hour and for coastal areas, a surge of two to four feet. So then if uh, we move over to Clay and Putnam, your worst 12 hours are from 2 p.m. to 2 a.m. Gusts to 60 miles an hour and isolated tornadoes possible. Also, that isolated tornado risk all across our area. So that does include those coastal Camden, Glen, and Nassau counties too. Then for St. John's and Flagler, your worst is 3 p.m. to 3 a.m. Gusts to 60 miles an hour and isolated tornadoes possible. For Duval County, your wettest is going to be from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. That's when we're going to get the most amount of rain and your windiest from 5 p.m. to 5 a.m. Gusts to 60 miles an hour and isolated tornadoes. For Ware, Charlton, Brantley and Pierce counties, 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. Gusts up to 75 miles an hour possible and some tornadoes are also possible. For Baker, Union, Bradford and Columbia, 6 p.m. to midnight. And so you could have gusts of 75 miles an hour or stronger. And that does mean that you could have some flying debris, very dangerous impacts there. Some tornadoes be prepared for some power outages with the rain and the wind. I do expect trees to go down in these counties and I do expect power outages. So please be charging your devices now, be getting ready, have your non perishables on hand, be stocked up on your medicine as well. Get your hurricane kit ready for this. So again, Baker Union, Bradford and Columbia, you could have gusts at or above 75 miles an hour, some tornadoes and do expect some power our outages. For our marine waters, the worst is going to be through the night on Thursday. Winds out of the east southeast 25 to 55 miles an hour and seas could perhaps get up to around 15 feet. So if, again, not a good time to be out on the water. Obviously, uh, if this if you are a commercial fisherman, anything like that, you know the drill here. But again, just be careful if you have to get on the water. Obviously not recommended. We also will be watching for storm surge and speaking of rising waters so with the storm surge along some coastal areas again, nothing too significant, but we will watch for at most a surge maybe a four feet. Now St. John's River, we are expecting you to also get some flooding again. So you're still under this coastal flood advisory that we've had. We could get some flooding at times of high tide along the St. John's River Basin. Quick check of our radar right now. We are dry. We've been watching this rain out to the east of our southeast Georgia counties, but right now we are dry. Something not good already getting rain over near the Apalachicola area where again, this is where we're expecting some of the worst of the storm of Helene to be to hit an impact. So it's not a good thing that they're already getting some rain right there. Quick look at your seven day forecast again Thursday into Friday morning. That is a first coast news weather impact alert day due to the strong winds that we could see the possibility of some spin up tornadoes. And again, the flooding as well. Now with the rain that we see, we could get some collection of rain on and some the collection of water on our roadways and in parks as well. We'll also watch for the river to rise, the St. John's River rising at times of high tide. Beyond this, we have uh, t our temperatures are going to stay in the 70s about a 40% coverage of rain through the weekend and into early next week. But for now today, not too bad. High near 86 degrees, 40% coverage of rain. Today is the day to prepare. If you need to do so, make sure that the storm drains are cleaned out. Make sure you are charging your devices and you have your hurricane kit packed and ready to go because we are expecting some power outages across the area Thursday into Friday morning. So be prepared for power outages, strong gusty winds and a bit of localized flooding from heavy rain. We'll keep you updated.